That's their character. When you put a person's thoughts, their talk, and their habits together, you are looking at the person's character. Now remember when we were defining character earlier, because the word means to imprint upon you, uh, in our case, we can be changed. Our character can be changed because whatever has been imprinted upon us can be altered or erased and modified. So that's the beauty about it, is that God takes people that have a certain kind of character and begins to work on the person's work on us and stuff that's been printed upon our lives, stamped in our lives, by God's Spirit, God can begin to erase stuff that shouldn't be there and put stuff in there that does need to be there to help bring us to the right character. All right? So character determines what? Behavior. And behavior does what? So if you want to know what a person is like, watch their behavior. You want to know what their character is like? Watch their behavior. Because behavior demonstrates character. In other words, if you couldn't, if a person just sit in a chair, never did anything, never said anything, never moved, never did anything, you might be wondering what kind of character do they have. But the moment they begin to speak, talk, and act, and walk, you get a glimpse of character. Okay? All right. There's a, a few scriptures that I need to take you through for us to understand that. Um, these are just simply uh, some descriptive uh, scriptures here or statements that you need to look at, uh, designated scriptures. First of all, Jesus Christ is the express image or character, in other words, the exact representation of God. All right? Folks didn't know what God was really like. But when Jesus was on this planet, they got a good glimpse of the character of God. All right? That's why he says to his disciples, when they says, show us the Father. He says, have I been so long with you, Philip, in John chapter 14? Have I been so long with you that, and you have not seen, he says, if you have seen me, that's what he told him, if you have seen me, Philip, you have seen the Father. Because what you saw expressed through me is the Father. All right? What you saw expressed through me is the Father. Whatever kind of muddy ideas you all have about God, he says, look at Jesus. And the very expression of God was seen through the earthly life of Jesus. All right, secondly, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is shaping us into the very image. Now, when we was in Hebrews 11, uh, 1, 3, image there was character in the Greek, all right? But in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, where it says that those who he predestined or those he foreknew, in other words, God's people, God planned before you got here. God planned. So in other words, you didn't get here and then God made up a plan. God had a plan, you arrived, and you fit in the plan. You don't arrive, and then God makes a plan to fit you. God has the plan, and then God works the plan in us. So it says that we have been predestined to conform us to the image. The word image there is icon. You remember on your computer program, when you click the icon, what do you get? It opens up to everything else that's associated with that particular icon or that program. So Jesus Christ, when you clicked on his life, when you tapped on his life, all you saw was the very nature and heart and expression and love and patience and power of the almighty God. But the Holy Spirit is shaping us into the very image and likeness of character of Jesus. Why not? If God is perfect, and he is, his son is perfect, amen, why would you want to shape people to anything less? Why would you want to shape people to some inferior model when you, you have the perfect model? Why not take people, if you really love people and you're God, why not tell people, look, don't, don't give up. Don't put your head down. Don't act like uh, you know it's over. No. In other words, if you like what Jesus was about, then just wait. That's where you're on your way. That's the journey. That's where God has taken you. Whatever you saw about Jesus, 
then you ought to, I mean, you really ought to be happy and excited. If you haven't had much patience, just stay in. God will work on you. And it'll get to be folks who say, you know what? You're acting like Jesus. Well, of course I'm acting like Jesus because God is making me exactly like Jesus. All right? In other words, it's a process, but he's making me exactly like Jesus. In other words, my thought pattern is becoming more in line with the way Jesus thought. The way I talk is becoming more like Jesus. My behavior is becoming more like Jesus all the time. If I'm letting the Holy Spirit work on it. Amen? But I can tell you what, God doesn't have a plan B. Plan A is make them like Jesus. Plan B is make them like Jesus. Plan C is make them like Jesus. And if they ball and squall, God say, still the same plan. Because he said, Jesus is the only one that was equipped to do it the way I wanted. He said, why would I want to make people anything different? Now I'm going to tell you all something. I know I'm kind of, you know, moving through swiftly today. But that's why the devil, I'm going to tell you right now, the devil doesn't want to have to deal with another Jesus. And he tried to kill the first one. And I can assure you he's trying to kill you. But when did he go after him? He went after him when he heard he was a baby. Because he knows babies grow up. And they all say. So the enemy would do everything he can. And sometimes we're not so smart. But the enemy is doing everything he can. Because he doesn't want to see a planet full of people like Jesus. He ran into him uh, 2,000 years ago on the planet. And, and that Jesus did him, I mean, he did the enemy in. I mean, he did him in. He, in other words, used, used evil folks to work out a plan of redemption on Calvary. And Colossians says, when they thought.